Hello everyone! In this video I will show you how to create a set of animation for your character. They will be idle, walk, run, slide, jump, fall, hurt and death animations. Also we will create a transitions between them and I will show you how to control them with quite simple C-sharp script. Let's create our project from the scratch so you could follow the steps and get everything better. First I add art assets to the project. Here is cat set of sprites campfire sprite sheet and grass sprite. The cat folder contains animations frames for each state – walk, dead and so on. Let's take first sprite of idle state. It will be our base sprite for our character. Rename it as a cat. Set order in layer to 2, so cat will be rendered in front of the grass later. Also let's add a rigid body to D that will help to move our cat. Set gravity scale to 2 collision detection to continuous and freeze zero rotation. Next component will be circle collider 2D that will help the cat to walk on the grass. Edit it a bit. Now let's create a campfire. Here is a campfire sprite sheet that we need to edit a bit. Set sprite mode as multiple and set filter mode as point no filter because our fire is kind of pixel art and we don't want it to be blurred. Hit apply to save the changes. Now click sprite editor button. Here we need to slice our sprite sheet to separate images. Hit slice drop down and select grid by cell count option. Number of columns will be 5, number of rows will be 1. Hit slice and now we have 5 separate frames of campfire. Hit apply to save the changes. Expand campfire sprite sheet, then take one of the frame and put it to our scene. Fire is pretty tiny, we'll fix it in a moment. Rename this game object as fire. Now to make fire bigger, we can modify campfire sprite sheet pixel per unit option. The lower this value is, the bigger image is. Let it be 15. Hit apply to save the change. There we go. Now let's create a ground to walk on. Add a grass sprite. Duplicate this new grass game object by pressing Ctrl plus D keys. Then position second grass game object at the right side of the screen. Add a box collider to one of the grass game object and edit it so it represents the ground. Like that. Now let's place our fire at the grass and change its order in layer to 3 so fire will be rendered in front of the grass and in front of the cat as well. Fire game object needs a collider to detect collisions with our cat. Add a box collider to D, mark it as trigger and edit it a bit. Ok. Now it's time to create some animations. Let's begin with fire game object. Select it, open animation window and hit create new animation button. Create new folder for animations. Enter it and create new animation which I call fire. Here it's timeline. Select all of the fire sprites and drag and drop them into it. Hit play. Animation runs way too fast. Reducing number of samples will slow it down. 10 will be ok. Fire is done. Now it's time to animate our cat. Select it and create new animation at animation window. First one will be idle animation. Expand cat folder. Select all of the sprites responsible for idle state and drag and drop them into timeline. Reduce number of samples to slow animation down. Let it be 20. Ok. Then create new animation clip. Now it will be walk animation. Select walk sprites. Drag and drop them into timeline. Reduce number of samples. Create run, jump, slide, fall, hurt and dead animations in the same way. Creating jump and fall animations, I use only 5 sprites excluding first, second and last one. To simplify this tutorial a bit, because those sprites are used as kind of transitional ones between those animations. But you can try to use them in your project creating a couple of transitional animation states. Also creating hurt and dead animations, I unchecked their loop option because those animations should be played only once per call. Ok, once animations are created, Make sure the cat is selected and proceed to animator window. Here are all of our animation states. Before we start to make transitions between them, we need to create some parameters that will be controlled through the script. First one is boolean is walking. Second one is boolean is running. Then boolean is sliding. Boolean is jumping. Boolean is falling. And then trigger is hurting. And trigger is dead unfortunately. Now let's rearrange animation rectangles a bit and create and tune transitions between them. In effect, order of appearance doesn't really matter, but I'll try to make it more clear. So first transition will be from any state to dead state. Right click on any state and make new transition. 
point it to that state and set it by left click. Now left click on transition arrow and let's set some options of it here. Exit time should be unchecked. Transition duration will be zero. Create new condition for transition to occur here, which will be if is dead parameter is triggered. Next transition will be from any state to hurt state. Exit time unchecked as well. Transition duration is zero and condition for this transition will be if is hurting parameter is triggered. Don't pay much attention to these warnings. They appear because we should add a condition first before setting exit time to zero. OK. Next transition is from hurt state to idle state, which is our default state marked with orange color. Here will be exit time equals to one second. So when hurt animation will be finished in one second, it will automatically translate to idle animation. OK. Next transition is from idle to walk state. No exit time here. Transition duration is zero and condition is when is walking is true. Next transition is from walk to idle animation state. No exit time, duration is zero, condition is walking is false. Next transition is from walk to run state. No exit time, transition duration is zero, condition is running is true. Next transition is from run to walk state. No exit time, duration is zero, condition is running is false. Next transition is from idle to run animation. No exit time. Transition duration is zero, condition is running is true. Next one is from run to idle. No exit time, transition duration is zero, condition is running is false. Next transition from run to slide. No exit time, transition duration is zero, condition is sliding is true. Next transition is from slide to idle. No exit time, duration is zero, condition is sliding is false. Next transition is from idle to jump. No exit time. Duration is zero. Condition is jumping is true. Next transition is from walk to jump. No exit time. Duration is zero. Condition is jumping is true. Next one is from run to jump. No exit time. Duration is zero. Condition is jumping is true. Next transition is from slide to jump. No exit time, duration is zero, condition is jumping is true. Next transition is from jump to fall. No exit time, duration is zero, condition is falling is true. And last transition is from fall to idle. No exit time, duration is zero, Condition is falling is false. We are done with transitions. Maybe it's a bit overcomplicated, but I try to consider each case. Now let's get back to our scene and take a look at cat script that will help us to control our character and to switch between those animation states. Here it is. First, here we have a bunch of variables that help us to perform desirable functionality. In start method, we assign rigid body and animator components and get current local scale parameter. Update method. If jump button is pressed and cat is not dead and if vertical velocity equals to zero, then the force is added to cat's rigid body in vector to up direction and cat jumps. Then if left shift button is being held down, then move speed is set to 10 and cat runs. And if shift is released, then move speed equals to 5 and cat walks. Then set animation method is invoked, which we will examine in a moment. And if cat isn't dead, then we read if left or right button is pressed and assign this value to direction x variable multiplied by move speed. In fixed update method, if cat is not being hurted at the moment, then it can move in x axis according to direction x value, getting a velocity to its rigid body. In late update method, we flip character's sprite according to its move direction, invoking check where to face method, which is declared below. Set animation state method. Here is where transitions are controlled mostly. So, if direction x variable equals to zero, which means that cat is standing still, then is walking and is running animator parameters are set as false, and idle animation is running. If vertical velocity equals to zero, then is jumping and is falling is set to false. Then, if absolute value of direction x variable equals to five, which means that character is supposed to be walking, and if vertical velocity equals to zero, then is walking parameter is set to true and walk animation is running. Same for run state. If direction x variable equals to 10, then run animation is running. And if direction x equals to 10, so cat runs, and if down arrow key is pressed, 
Then his sliding parameter is set to true and slide animation is running. Then if vertical velocity is greater than zero, which means that cat goes up jumping, then his jumping parameter is set to true and jump animation is running. If cat goes down, then jump animation stops and fall animation starts running. In check where to face method, we flip cat sprite according to move direction. So according to facing right value and current value of local scale, we flip game object sprite by multiplying its x value by negative one. And finally transform local scale is set as local scale. On trigger enter 2D method is invoked when cat collides with another collider which is a trigger. So if that game object's name equals to fire, then health points value is decreased by one. Then again if it's fire and health points value is greater than zero, then its hurting parameter is triggered, hurt animation starts running and hurt coroutine is started. Else if health points value is less or equals to zero, then cat stops, is that variable is set to false, is that parameter is triggered and that animation is playing. In hurt coroutine, is hurting variable is set to true, so cat temporarily will not be able to move and current velocity is set to zero, so cat stops its movement in any direction at the moment. Then, according to facing right variable, we add a force to cat's rigid body in up left or up right direction. So, if cat hits the fire from the left, then cat is kicked back from it to the left. If cat hits fire from the right, then it's kicked back to the right. Then, coroutine is paused by half of a second to let the hurt animation to play almost to the last frame, and after that, is hurting is set to false and cat can move again. That's the script. Drag and drop it to cat game object, hit play and see how it works. So now our character can perform idle, walk, run, slide, jump, fall, hurt and dead animations. Hope you liked this tutorial, thank you for watching, see you next time.